Hey guys, welcome to Great Learning. Have you ever come across a video where celebrities or anyone else are saying things that they might have never said? Well, if you have, then you've watched a deep fake video. Deep fake is basically a technology based on deep learning and neural networks that is used to create videos from images of people and even clone voices as well. This seems super interesting and guess what you can also build a system to do just this in python all by yourself as well but then you might be wondering how to answer that question we here at great learning have come up with this video discussing about how you guys can create your own deep fake videos using python we will learn a lot about what deep fake is why it is so popular how it works and of course a fantastic demonstration that showcases the power of the technology as well well i know you guys are super excited to get started with this what are we waiting for my name is anirudh rao let's get started Before we get started I want to introduce you to Great Learning Academy. This is a free initiative by Great Learning where you can have access to over 200 plus courses with 1000 plus hours of free content on all of the trending high demand domains absolutely free. Register now to complete the course and get your free certificate of completion as well. Check out the link in the description box of the video below for more details. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. This is done to make sure you do not miss out on any of the new updates or video releases from Great Learning. And of course, guys, if you enjoy this video, show us some love and do like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing, right? So make sure you share this video with your friends, colleague and everyone who can make use of it. And at the end of it, make sure to comment on the video if you have any queries or any suggestions and i'll be more than happy to respond to all of your comments all right guys so to talk about the agenda for this particular session how to create a deep fake video i know you guys are super excited to get started right but then to talk about what all we need to cover in this particular session to make sure we have a complete understanding of the domain of deep fake right to begin first of all we need to understand what a deep fake is when the term deep fake is thrown around there are many meanings out there so let's make sure to understand it thoroughly and make sure we know it correctly as well right once we understand what it is the next thing that we're going to take a look at is to understand why this concept is so popular right deep fake is so popular in a way where uh, deep fake videos on youtube pretty much you know they get millions and millions of views just because they go viral for the fact right so we have to take a look at that as well the next thing we're going to have to take a look at is okay so if we have to create our own deep fake video how do we go about doing and what it is that we require right once you understand what is required to do it how to go about doing it we'll actually take a look at a very well uh, done research process. project basically a demonstration where we'll be uh, trying to implement deep fake using python now the demo is basically from a research project it's an absolutely fantastic project called the, it's called the first order uh, model of animation right so make sure you guys are sticking till the end of the video uh, to take a look at that as well because there you will see the power of the technology and it will definitely uh, uh, you know amuse you right okay fantastic so now let's get started with the first item on the agenda which is introduction to deep fake The first thing that I want to ask you guys is there's an image being shown on your screen right now of course it's the ex president uh, Barack Obama now in the image that is being shown on your screen you can see that there's two images of uh, president Obama one on the left and one on the right one of these is an or, uh, is an original one and the other one is not original right so can you just take a look at it can you glance it off maybe for 10 15 seconds and can you tell me which is a uh, fake and can you tell me which is original Well I'm sure you guys are looking at uh, the president's ear, eyes, eyebrows, lips and everything to find out if there's any abnormality in any of these videos but it is very difficult to catch one right but then guess what let me tell you this the image uh, the moving image what you saw on the left is basically the original image of ex president Obama and on the right is a one which is created completely from scratch and it is a fake video now look at the image again and tell me if you can see these different 
consistent is there any way that can make you tell that the image on the right is a fake one and an image on the left is an original one it looks exactly the same way right now this is one of the reasons why this technology is so disruptive and of course it is so it, it goes really viral on uh, social media platforms and everywhere else right because with this technology you if you just have the image of one person you can create any video of uh, that person saying anything you know doing anything he or she wants right now that uh, is a concern in this particular domain so you might have already experienced this you might have watched a video on the internet uh, where uh, you know it literally doesn't make sense so for example if you talk to a person who is a thorough expert in biology right maybe a triple degree holder a doctor a phd holder in biology now if you see that person teaching data science entirely in a very very thorough fashion just like someone who would have uh, had 25 years of experience teach you that don't you think something might be off or maybe one of your favorite news reporters become uh, uh, you know they they start doing something which which wasn't in their script right now i'm not saying these guys are actually doing these it's just that you're watching a video and there is no way to authenticate if it's that person or not right so for example you can think of president joe biden now president joe biden i am sure has a lot of work to do in the United United States of America, right? I am not sure that he would uh, find time to lecture people on data science in complete detail. So, if you have ever come across a video of President Biden teaching data science, understand that it is a deep fake video, and President Biden, uh, I can assure you, has never put out a 11 hour or a 12 hour course teaching you guys data science, right? So, please, uh, whenever you take a look at these videos, it's absolutely hilarious to look at, of course, uh, and you'll be wondering why is this, how, and all these questions. We're going to answer all those questions here. but uh, as funny as it is and of course as concerning as it is in terms of privacy you really have to appreciate the technology that is going into doing this right uh, this technology has already been used in one of the fast and the furious uh, movie series if you guys remember uh, paul walker was one of the actors who had completed uh, 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 you know he had completed most of the shots except one shot the last one that you see uh, in the car right where uh, dom goes in a different direction and uh, paul walker goes in a different direction so there you if you look at it very very carefully it doesn't look like paul walker because that is his brother's face uh, that has been sort of adjusted and uh, you know using the technology of deep fake other ai and deep learning technologies uh, right so if you're wondering how did they even shoot the scene of course after the sad demise of paul walker well they used technology right now that is in my opinion a fantastic thing to know about because you have so much opportunities uh you know down the line uh, it it just it just opens up a pandora's box if i have to say right so if, if again coming back to the point if you have ever seen a video where things don't make sense try to hit the comment section if you find just memes and uh, uh you know trolls in the comment section try to search if it's a deep fake video right you can actually google what the person is saying and find out if it's a deep fake video or not to check what everyone else is saying in the non technical world regarding deep fake right usually when we talk about the non technical world what i mean is that uh, you know people uh, putting uh, about uh, talking about deep fake on social media news companies covering it media's putting out articles and blogs for example here is uh, uh, you know a statement from the guardian right a guardian is a very well uh, renowned media company and now they say that deep fake is the 21st century's answer to photoshop how fantastic is this we know that all those years back when photoshop photoshop came out that was the most powerful tool that went super super viral and that eventually put adobe on the map right so that tool helped you manipulate a million things in terms of how you would work with photos but now we have the technology the power and the understanding to just take one picture and eventually create a video out of you and make it convincing enough that you'll have to look thrice if not 10 times to find out which one might be a fake one right fantastic now that we are sort of clear with this we have uh, we spoke about our experiences in terms of have we ever uh, seen a deep fake video have we ever uh, uh, you know had chance to understand the technology let's quickly come back to eventually take a look at what deep fake is and how it gets its name right the first thing that you'll have to look at uh, there is a reason why this technology is called a deep fake right because it involves a lot of deep learning it's actually an application of deep learning where one goes on to create videos where the product of these videos are basically uh, the results of machine learning models deep learning models and neural networks right so they use deep learning to create 
fake events, fake images, fake videos. Now bring the word deep and bring the word fake together. What do we get? We get deep fake, right? That's literally how the name has, uh, uh, you know, been established. But to give you a complete picture of what goes into a final finished product, uh, you have to take a look at the last point that's mentioned here, right? Video plus deep learning plus artificial intelligence is deep, a deep fake. So basically using the concepts of deep learning and using the power and efficiency of AI and how Having a video, a source material to work with, once you bring all of these together and make them work in tandem, this is basically what you get, a deep fake video, right? Fantastic. Now we have to come to a question where you might ask, okay, so if this is a case where we're trying to create fake videos, why would people even want to use deep fake, right? Why do you want to create fakes of something that are out there? Now I have my mobile phone in my hand and that's an original uh, one, right? So basically from whatever company it is, be it Apple one plus it's an original mobile. Now, if you were to give me a fake mobile, uh, uh, you know, even though you were very convincing, I wouldn't accept it because I would try to find ways of, uh, if it either being fake or original. Now there are ways in deep fake as well. Stay with me for a second. We're going to discuss that. But before that, to come to the point, yes, people use deep fakes because there's so many different ways of how you can, uh, you know, easily get some content to go viral, right? Uh, in this case, you might have seen people saying things which they may or may not be as I told you right if you find a hardcore biologist and ask him to and if you see this renowned biologist lecturing about data science in complete detail with like formulas talking about alpha values and gamma values well you know, this is just one example. Now probably think of another celebrity. Now think of someone in a very prominent place in the world and they, when they say things and if it ever goes viral, well, the world just, every news company just starts printing things, uh, you know, because it goes viral, right? I mean, that's what the world wants and that's how uh, uh, we live. Uh, it's it's not a bad thing. Now, when you think about slightly good applications of deep fake, guys, it's not always bad, right? When you take a look at the good applications, I absolutely love it if people decide that they have they have an image of their face and they decide, okay, I want to become Tom Cruise in one of these movies, right? Or of course, if you're, uh, you know, if you're a person who's watching this and you want to become Angelina Jolie in one of your favorite movies, it is definitely possible, right? You can literally uh, swap out the face. Uh, uh, you can have Angelina Jolie's face structure, but your face elements, eyes, ears, nose and mouth be it in there, right? So that's, uh, it sounds funny, but it's a fantastic thing to go about doing. Or here is one more very, very important reason why people use deep fakes. I am very sure you guys have heard of TikTok, right? TikTok, of course, it's a social media application uh, and it is still popular around the world, I guess. Uh, now, when you take a look at all these dancing videos that go super popular, extremely viral on a, uh, on a TikTok, uh, you'll have to take a look at how many of these are even real or how many of these are fake. Now, I'm not saying that, hey, you can take a look at a video and call it a fake, even though it's a, it's, it's a real thing, right? Please don't do that. You're going to offend the person. But... There are cases and there have been people who have seen this video and they were like, hey, something is not right. Let me try to figure this out. And they eventually debunked it and figured out using multiple tools that it is actually a deep fake rather than an original video, right? So that's one way to think about it. And the other way is maybe you just want to dance like your uh, in the, the person that you look up to. So you just put the, put your face there and just look at it, be happy, see how you would look uh, doing those moves as well, right? Now, it's, it's, it's absolutely hilarious, concerning, and of course, I'm in love with the technology at the same time. But then you have to ask a question saying, okay, so are there any ways that I can use to spot a deep fake video or should I be some, uh, you know, very well-known developer who completely knows deep fake in and out to do it? Well, guess what? It turns out you don't have to do this. Just make sure that you're looking out for two or three things in a video. And uh, no matter how good the deepfake is, there is a very good chance if you analyze it on a granular level, you're going to find that there are inconsistencies, right? Uh, especially with a person speaking. Now, if you have realized even in movies, especially animation movies as well, it's very difficult uh, to have the teeth, the tongue and the lip movement correct uh, as accurate as what it would be in, in real life that we say it, right? You can only look at humans and then sort of uh, understand how they move, how we sort of move our lips, tongue and all of that. Now in a deep fake video, yes, uh, an AI system or an AI bot will get very, very close to it, but there 
are certain places where your computer just might not cut it. When I say your computer, I mean the technology uh, that we have today, right? So there, when when the person is sort of speaking something, but the expression is not right, he or she is saying something happy, but they look sad. Or if they're saying something about, uh, you know, things that don't make sense, they're, they're talking about uh, something, but their movement is in a very robotic way, right? Now I am talking to you in a regular fashion, but if I try to talk like this, I think you find a difference right i just spoke like a robot well that's the thing you can actually catch all of these things if you hear it very accurately that's how you figure out it's a deep fake video or not the next thing is a classic mismatch of audio and video synchronization right even if the lip movement and everything is accurate if the audio video are out of sync right it doesn't make any sense you look at it the second you look at it you can tell that it is a fake now adobe has come up with multiple tools wherein they have extremely intelligent and efficient tools that will take a look at the video and give you probably a percentage or a metric to tell you if the video that is being shown to adobe is a deep fake video or not now we have tools uh, to actually assess and verify what's going on with these deep fake videos so as much of a concern that existed very long back, that really isn't the case now. Because if you find a video and you want to assess if it's deep fake or not, now you have the tools to do it, right? You just look at it. And of course, if it's something that goes viral, trust me, there are thousands of developers around the world who will just take a look at it and they'll have the skills to just debunk it and say if it's a deep fake or not. So on those lines, we have got it covered, right? now. We know what deep fake is. We're, take, we're talking about examples. We're talking about all of these things, all these situations where you might have seen it. We know why uh, and how the name itself originates. But do you know about deep fake's popularity? Deep fake is such a cringy and a funny thing, at least for me, even though I am a technical person who understands uh, the entirety of working of deep fake. If you take a look at in the general perspective, right, the general population, not everyone is a, a you know a deep learning programmer or a deep learning expert like me. So why is it going viral? In this particular case, the first thing you have to think about the word viral, right? Probably not the wrong time to talk about viruses and viral stuff. But of course, we're talking about a different viral here. Now, any viral content that attracts a lot of interest or a lot of attention eventually becomes super popular uh, in a way where, uh, you know, even the people who are creating deep fake videos are basically, uh, you know, training their algorithms in such a efficient way and such a nice way that it is becoming day by day more and more and more harder to actually take a look at a video for the general population and to say if it's fake or not. So it's extremely convincing videos that we have right now. And when it's extremely convincing and when people are saying things which they would otherwise not say and it goes viral think about all this masala that happens right eventually you it just it is everywhere because everyone wants to find out if it's an original or not if it's uh, even though if it might be a deep fake some people might say it's an original and that'll create a huge ruckus uh, in the news itself right and of course considering all of these there are many governments across the globe where they're trying to put an effort to actually stop the spread of misinformation right now you never know uh, uh, you know with respect to a, a person in power saying something and if it is very convincing and if it uh, is something out of the ordinary well people can definitely misuse of it right but of course if you're taking a look at politicians if you're taking a look at someone on a very very superior level all of this is very difficult but of course i do believe uh, uh you know even prominent characters you know like uh, mark zuckerberg right the co-founder of facebook he has a deep fake video made on him if you haven't had a chance to take a look at it uh, i suggest you open up a new tab uh, or in fact watch it after this video to understand what i'm talking about as well Right now we covered it in the aspect of what a general person, a general population would do, a non-technical audience. But now let's look at it in terms of its technological aspects, because we all are technical people here trying to understand the technology, right? The first thing you really have to understand is that uh, we have had multiple uh, breakthroughs in the domain of deep learning. Deep learning 10 years ago was not anywhere near powerful as what we have in terms of deep learning, the capability, the power today, right? That's because of the general advance in technology and everything in terms of products, uh, in terms of all the softwares that go into making the products fantastic. So we've already had a fantastic foundation. Deep learning is solid for the next five, 10 years. There's continuous improvements. It's very efficient. And of course, with breakthroughs such as this, it has to be uh, as popular as it can get. Right now, the second thing, when you say that, hey, if it takes Python to create a deep fake video or something as technical as this, why would general population be interested in it? 
Let me tell you this, to create a deepfake video, there's multiple tools out there which eventually give you a user interface to what uh, probably we're about to check. But uh, nowadays, it has uh, there is a trend where you can see that deepfake videos can be created without putting much effort at all. You're going to require a video, you're going to require an image of a person, and probably if you're looking at voice, there's voice cloning done as well. So you, all you do is you bring these three together and you have one fantastic uh, deepfake video, right? So really, it doesn't take any, any uh, more effort. And you will see See that as we go on to run the demo of course it's a research based project so it makes it even more easier uh, for a layman to actually go on to create a video from that right so if you take a look at exactly what I just said in terms of voice clones, right? It is even possible to have voice skins of people. Now, as in, uh, you would probably record something that a person says for a while and you let your deep learning algorithm learn that person's voice and eventually try to reproduce it back, right? That way, if you've had your algorithm reproduce everything uh, in terms of the voice of a person, you can just make it say anything that you want uh, in, in any language uh, that you would want, right? If you train the algorithm for it, if, if you want the person to speak whatever you want in Japanese, well, get some content where the person is speaking Japanese, uh, use it to train your model and eventually you're done, right? Now take a look at the fourth point, right? The fourth point makes me feel fantastic because we're talking about research and development. And of course, in terms of research and development, th these guys are the ones who are putting fantastic use to the technology out there because using the concept of deep fake, knowing that you can just have an image and recreate an entire video, a person, a voice uh, with just well, tiny amounts of information should give them access, uh, unprecedented access to what we can do uh, in the future as well, right? Now let's just go back 50 years. Uh, 50 years back, if you take a look at how, uh, you know, cars used to function, how our computers used to function, how our mobiles never existed. So that's a bad example, right? So when you take a look at it, you will not, uh, uh, you will figure out that there is such a huge leap in technology in just the last 50 years, just one generation, the world went from world wars all the way to having the most, uh, uh, you know, fantastic technologies across the globe, right? In that particular case, uh, you know, having the ability to do it, knowing that we can build fantastic products, just using this baseline and of course having fun, uh, along the way is exactly what makes deep fake as popular as it is right okay superb now we're gonna have to answer this question uh, uh for the question that says what is required to create a deep fake video we understand we understood a lot about deep fake videos but have we checked out what it actually takes to create one well, as I just told you, uh, in terms of what is required to take an image and create a fake video out of it, all you require at the end of the day is just one good quality picture of you. So you might just say, hey, if you just have one picture of me, what is it that you can do? Well, uh, we can create a video where you can probably dance, you can be making speeches, uh, uh, you know, you can be the president of uh, any country that you choose to, uh, you can be anyone you want, you can sing, and there's a million things. You can basically do whatever it is that you want and all it takes is one one very good image of you, right? So this at the end of the day is the non-technical requirement in terms of how one would go on to uh, create these videos as well. But general population aside, we have to talk about the technical nitty gritties, right? Now, when we're talking about the technical stuff, you have to understand that when you're creating a deep fake video, you're going to have to require knowledge about deep learning, AI, and how to handle a large amount of data. Now, when you're talking about large amount of data, deep learning, AI, so the only programming language that comes into my mind is Python. Of course, we have other programming languages such as R, we have Java and all of those, but uh, in this particular case, Python outshines them in terms of its efficiency and how easy it is to work with, right? That's the first point. The second thing is, if you're a person who's looking forward to creating a deep fake video and understanding the technical aspects of it, you're going to require a completely detailed understanding of how deep learning works and of course, how it can be used as well. Now, uh, you might ask a question saying, hey, I do have an overview. I have a basic understanding of deep learning. Can I still create absolutely fantastic deep fake videos? Well, you might be able to do that with other tools and techniques which already use uh, these kind of uh, models trained by another expert. But if you have to do it from scratch, well, let me be clear again, you're going to require in-depth knowledge of deep learning for this, right? And of course, when you're talking about deep learning and neural networks, there's one fantastic type uh, of, you know, one, one very important 
different concept called as GANs, G-A-N-S. It's basically called as Generative Adversarial Networks. Now, have you ever heard of what a GAN is, how it works or why you even require it? Because let me tell you this, to actually go on to create a deep fake video, we are going to have to understand how a GAN works and of course another entity called as a autoencoder as well, right? So that is exactly what we are going to check out now. So we understood a lot about deep learning. Now it is time to understand how it actually works in terms of all of its technicality and all amongst all of its bling bling, right? The first thing that we're going to have to talk about is generative adversarial networks or GANs as it's called, right? So whenever I say GAN or G-A-N, uh, I, I, I mean to say generative adversarial networks. So what is, what is a GAN? What is, what, what type of network are we talking here? Well, with respect to a GAN, let me simplify it, uh, you know, as much as possible here. So it's basically two neural networks going against each other to find out which of these processes can help to make the other one as efficient as possible. And in terms of one generating content and the other one trying to guess uh, if, the, if the content generated is accurate or not, right? Uh, so that is where the name itself comes, generative adversarial. Generative is a network which uses the data to learn something and an adversarial network basically tries to figure out if it's a fake video that's been created by the generator network or if it's the actual data set that the, uh, that the generative network used to learn, right? Now there's two things here. As I just said, to make sure that you guys understand this better, uh, there are two neural networks at play and these are the networks, right? So one model or one network talks about how it can go on to create new examples using the data. Now you will have a lot of data set. I just told you that you're going to require an image of you to go on to create a deep fake video. So using that image and using deep learning, using uh, and running over, of course, a data set to understand and to even create a video the first network is responsible for it, the generator network. Now, once the video is created, right, uh, it's, it's, it has to be a methodology where we use another network to go on to check if we can figure out if this uh, network has done its work correctly or not, right? It's basically like machine learning, but since you're talking about deep learning, it has to be machine learning on steroids, right? So that's basically what uh, I am trying to tell you guys here. One model generates all of these images. We have another model, which basically, uh, you know, just discriminates and try to tries to understand saying, hey, uh, the generator model, whatever. So let's just say that generator model will basically send one video to me. Now I am the discriminator model. So what I will do is I look at the generator models video and I'm going to say, Hey, this is the, this is original content or this is generated content. This is 50% original content. This is 60% generated content, right? So I'm going to be classifying the output as either an original content as in it's directly lifted from the data set or another part of it where I say, Hey, I know that the generator network created this particular video and I can tell that you created this particular video, right? That is what the discriminator model works. One creates the other one verifies if the creation is uh, right or wrong or anything like that. Right. But the question now, now that you might ask is saying, okay, so we understand that neural networks are super powerful. One network can create and generate these images. That is okay. That is common. That is understood. Now, if you're taking another network and you're putting it against the first network, how does this even understand? How do these networks even know how to reconstruct it accurately in a way where it's trying to fool another algorithm in itself, right? Another uh, AI deep learning powered bot has to understand, it has to have the clarity to know that one is a generated uh, fake video and the other one is an original uh, video, right? To do that, the first thing that happens is that a neural network, right? The generator will basically take all the data. It's going to encode it into a format. It's going to compress it and encode it to a format where it can understand. And of course, it's just efficient to work with, right? Instead of working with a huge file, it just brings it down to a tiny extent where it can effectively understand everything about the file. And eventually later, you can just blow it up again. If you didn't do that, and if you want to start with the highest quality of deep fake video at the start itself, well, it's going to take a ton of time to train these machines, right? Because these machines are trying to take a look at the pixels. They're trying to take a look at so many tiny details in the face, the face structure and all. So if you do it at a very high quality, uh, you know, very high resolution, it's going to take a ton of time for your models to train. And of course, after it trains, if you have to tweak something around, retrain it and run it, well, that's going to take a lot of time, right? So the first important thing to understand is that even though what quality of video you have, squish it down into something very small, small enough for your model to understand and later it can definitely be enlarged later with all the metadata that we're going to have from the models, right? So this is the first part of it. 
Once that is done, the next thing basically happens in a way where the data that we actually use to reconstruct it is brought and made in a way where it's close to the original input as possible. Now, what I mean by that is you have the original video and now we have a deep fake video. Our deep fake video is basically tweaked and tuned in a way where it looks exactly like the original video. That is the second part of it, right? But if you take a look at it, this doesn't seem like how a uh, how the GAN that we just discussed works, right? Well, of course it isn't because here we're going to be using a concept called as auto encoders. Now auto encoders are absolutely fantastic entities, which is again, very popular in machine learning and deep learning where it uses encoders, a, a bit of code and a couple of decoders as in it changes uh, data in a way where it manipulates it. It understands what is going on. So it takes in all the inputs and it has multiple different layers. It will have a code segment, which eventually talks about what needs to be done. Uh, you know, the heart of it, the functionality of it, right and once the functionality side of it is clear it will try to make sure that the output uh, is is obtained right so that is where the decoder comes once you encode the process of encoding is to basically attach a code or a cipher to anything once you decode it is basically you, you removing the password you removing that kind of whatever encryption encryption entity there that is basically how an auto encoder works now we know how an auto encoder works Previously, we checked out how we can go on to create it accurately and ensure that uh, we can use this reconstruction uh, well for our deep learning videos. But what we haven't talked about is the final network that goes, the final two neural networks that goes into creating a deep fake video, right? So one network is called as the forger network and the other network is called as the detector network. You can find out what they do just from the name itself. A forger network takes all the data from the training data set, it trains and eventually it acts and eventually it actually has the capability to create the fake video. So whatever is being forged, whatever is being duped, whatever is being created, all of those bad things happen in the forger network. When I say bad things, I mean it in a fun way, right? Now, uh, once all these fake forgery stuff is done with one network, there is another network that is sitting here. It's called as the detector network. The detector network understands everything, understands the output of the forger network, right? So the detector network's input is basically the output of the forger network in a way where it trains and trains up to a point where it can detect uh, you know this point is basically called as the choke point now a choke point what happens is that a detector network can accurately say that hey this is a deep fake video or it's going to say hey this is not a deep fake video right so it will train until that point where it can accurately and 100% say that this is fake and this is real. And eventually you have your deep fake system and your architecture ready, right? One is throwing out fake videos out there. The other one is basically verifying and saying that, hey, I can understand that this is fake. Good job, right? So if you take a look at it, eventually at, the, at its most granular level, this is how it would work, right? But then we need to take a look at it practically. Of course, everything that we have covered about, uh, you know, deep fake until now definitely seems fancy to you. It seems very interesting and I'm sure you guys are excited for the demo, right? So whatever we have learned theoretically, let's take a look at it practically. Now guys, the demo that we're going to be taking a look at is basically a research model demonstration. It's called as the first order motion model for image animation. And we have the following five people to thank, right? So this, uh, deep fake example can actually be found on the particular GitHub. All you have to do is search for first order model uh, motion model and eventually you're going to get uh, all of these details. So definitely the entire demo, the project, uh, the credit goes to these guys. These guys are the researchers uh, who are behind this particular concept of how easily we can use Python to eventually get to the deep fake, right? Now guys, one more thing that I have to mention is that deep fake, as I told you, requires in-depth knowledge of deep learning. And of course, deep learning is since it's implemented in Python. Python, the programmer also needs to have in-depth knowledge in Python itself, right? So at this moment of time, I know you might have a question saying, hey, I am not sure if I have in-depth knowledge either in Python or in uh, deep learning or not a knowledge enough to actually go on to build a deep fake video. Well, if you just want to make videos as a person who's an enthusiast, you really are not going to require any of these skills as I'll show you with the demo. But my goal with this demo is to showcase the 
power of the technology in itself rather than explaining what each line of python uh, does right of course uh, when we are go uh, you know when you go on to understanding at a granular level that's an absolutely fantastic approach but i understand that some of you uh, you know some of you guys in the audience might not have the capability to understand extremely complex syntax in deep learning right so we'll just have a quick overview to take a look at what we can do with respect to python right Fantastic guys. Now let me quickly open up Google Collaboratory uh, as my Jupyter Notebook because uh, I absolutely love working with Google Collab. It's nothing but a simple Jupyter Notebook that gets hosted on the Google Cloud platform. So I can take my code anywhere I want. I can be sitting in my kitchen writing code on my mobile phone. I can in fact write code on my smart TV. Of course, I've never done that, but I know I can do it. Uh, you know, we, we can do it on my uh, laptop, mobile phone. Uh, I'm at home. I can write code. I'm sitting at Starbucks. I can write code, right? That's one advantage you get uh, with Google Collab as well, right? So let's get to Collab. All right, guys. So we've come to Google Collab out here and we're just taking a look at a Jupyter Notebook, a fantastic yet very simple Jupyter Notebook, which will show us the most powerful application of uh, deep learning that you can actually go on to build very easily, right? You, in fact, if you follow through with me, uh, if you just follow through the user interface and the experience that I'm about to provide, all of you all can take your own images and create your own deep fake videos in the same moment of time that I'm going to be doing it, right? Now, one very important thing that all of you all should note is that uh, since we're creating uh, deep fake videos out here, it's basically fake videos of people. Uh, you know, we want to make sure to tell you this at this moment of time that this is basically an openly available research study and we're doing this for educational purposes only, right? So please guys, whenever you're going to uh, work with or creating your own deep fake videos, make sure that you're not offending anyone. Make sure you're not, uh, you know, intruding someone else's privacy. And at the same time, make sure you're not doing anything illegal as well, right? Fantastic. Now, once we have cleared through that, I have to tell you that we have a lot of code here. Uh, first of all, let me connect the runtime. I'm just going to click this button on the top right, which just said connect. And once it connects, it says connected. Let's just quickly wait for that. And I think it should take one or two seconds. Uh, it says initializing now. And you see that it says connected with a tick. Now my code is ready to execute. So let's just take it. Uh, let's just take a look at what we're trying to do with this piece of code. Well, the first thing is very simple. We're going to have to install this particular library called FFMPY. Basically, it's the encoder or the decoder whenever you're working with videos and you have to convert this video to mp4 and all of that you might have seen right uh, there's another format called mkv it's called as matroska video and then we have mp4 uh, right so if you have to encode and decode into these formats python has to understand how to do it now we have libraries in python that will tell python how to do it pretty simple right of course and then you'll take a look at us uh, making a git pull basically from the repository of uh, this person and we're going to take a look at the entire demo model here as well right so we all we're trying to do is we're trying to clone all of the repository as in whatever data is present on their github i am trying to bring it to my own google collab uh, just with these couple of commands right you can see that it's executing and you can also see a tiny uh, green triangle which is showing which line of code was running and now that we've done this Actually, uh, we have all the data that we require to run. You might ask me a question saying, hey, can we have one Jupyter Notebook or can you please uh, showcase the Jupyter Notebook wherein you know you can just give you all the files? Well, it's not possible because first of all, uh, take a look at the size of the code right now. All of this is in HTML. Uh, I keep going down, I keep going down, I keep going down. Now, everything that you see here, right? See, uh, I'm just zooming, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving again. Everything the code that you saw is not at the heart of uh, how this is functioning, right? This is basically an HTML. Of course, we are importing all the libraries at the start itself to begin with. But then if you take a look at a couple of uh, uh, syntax examples, you'll see that some of these is HTML and we're adding a lot of styling elements and all of that, right? Now, why are we doing that? You will get a complete picture uh, to talk to you about all the files that we're going to use. Let me click uh, the panel on the left side, right? Panel on the left side basically talks about the files. This is where everything about this entire research project, all the files that are required for this, the data set, the uh, logic, the code, everything resides uh, on my uh, Google uh, Collab uh, environment right now because uh, it's originally present in these locations and I've just cloned it and made a copy of it uh, to showcase to you guys as well, right? Look at this. There's multiple files. For example, there's one file called animate.python. Animate.python basically takes all the aspect of the faces. Once the deep fake uh, email 
image has been created and it understands that hey this is an eye this is how a mouth moves this is a nose if you, if i move my head to the left and right my nose my face also should move my eyes is also moving so once all the data is mapped and ready it has to actually go on to move the face to show that you know something's going on it has to take the image and make a video that is where the animate uh, uh, you know function comes into the picture now and do not get confused guys there's multiple different python codes that is basically going on to work together now if i have to explain uh, how this particular piece of code works as i told you if you do not have uh, hands on knowledge about another fantastic uh, framework called as pytorch it's going to be very difficult for you guys to understand right pytorch is basically uh, uh, you know I, I'm very sure you guys might have heard of TensorFlow. TensorFlow is from Google. PyTorch is basically from the people at Facebook. So they had a programming language called Torch, and eventually using it with Python gave it the name PyTorch. It's a very powerful deep learning library, right? Now, as you can see, this is just one function. Uh, I mean, one Python file that goes into making this work. You can see there's many others. There's something called augmentation. Then you have another one called as uh, crop video. Crop video basically talks about you taking to uh, uh, you know adding your face into the particular deep fake video and eventually crop. it to just show uh, your face your features and all of that right of course all of these can be tweaked and tuned to make it even better but i'm sure we're taking a look at the data set and the demo from researcher so i'm sure they have done a fantastic job right and then you have the uh, demo.ipnb and then you have multiple different files wherein it will talk about how you can go on to uh, throw in images how you can go on to create uh, these videos that we're talking about at the end of it right so now let me just close all these files and you can see here there's one more uh, file called as tra- train.py train.py is exactly where your model trains this is where we have the generator neural network can you see it says generator everywhere that you put your eyes on here this is where this is the magic right so this is where it takes an image makes a fake video and it says i have done it that particular neural network the naughty boy it's basically this one right fantastic now after that uh, uh, you know it's going to have to reconstruct the particular video after attaching a new face onto the video and all of that that is where we have this on a, a file which talks about how you can go on to do that reconstruction.py right now imagine all of these files and if we have to explain all of these files to a beginner right now that's the intention of the demo here is that uh, i want you i want to show you guys how powerful it is to go on to do this as you saw everything is python code right we are not doing anything out of the ordinary so let me go on to run this uh it definitely is going to take some time if it's taking a ton of time make sure you guys are putting your run time on your gpu right you can see that it's already selected as gpu for me for you it might be cpu or something called tpu tensor processing unit it's fine uh just make sure to change it to gpu because the output uh will be pretty quick now let me scroll down let me scroll down let me zoom out because we're seeing some fantastic output here right i want to zoom out a little more guys okay now if you're wondering how can we get this output from python you realize here that we're using a ton of html we're using a ton of other code as well to make this work well all of that starting piece of code which was a huge is basically as it is giving us a user interface a clickable interface that anyone can use to go on to work with right now ladies and gentlemen The first question you will have is okay I do see a lot of people's faces around here some prominent faces we have Winston Churchill uh we have multiple presidents we have president putin we have the mona lisa uh and of course a lot of other people right and then when you're taking a look at the videos so everything on the top is basically an image this is just a static image guys this is not a video now everything on the bottom that you see these are videos so what you can do is you can attach your own image and in fact you can attach your own a uh, video as well so you can use one video attach it with another image you can take one image attach it with another video and either way you can create your own deep video deep fake video right all you have to do is click upload upload and you have to just uh, make sure it works now we have multiple images to begin with this comes with the data set of the research project itself right so we have many cartoon characters we have shrek and i'm sorry i only know shrek i don't know who, what these three are and when you're taking a look at dolls i know this is chucky i know this is annabel this is it this is from toy story this is freddy ET and uh, again another other one from Toy Story right so you can take a look at uh, everything that we have then we have people from Game of Thrones right we have the white walker we have the new king uh, we have of course Jon Snow uh, <laughs> and Ned Stark of course I I I'm a huge fan of Game of Thrones so I know all of these characters right now these are just images and then in fact we have images of statues as well that we can choose to basically put as an input instead of us manually having to enter which image to send and giving the path of the file telling that hey it's abc. Uh, 
png abt abc dot jpg we are basically having an interface right we really have to thank the researchers uh, who have given us this fantastic project to take a look at right okay so the first thing we going to do is let's just say that i want to use mona lisa's face uh, in a video basically uh, put out by uh, obama so what it's going to do is it's going to use the image of mona lisa and it's going to use all the other elements of uh, president obama's videos and it's going to bring it into one and eventually give us an output right now in the bottom you can see that there's a big blue button says generate uh, if you click on it it generates but just before that let's take a look at multiple models out there now with respect to deep fake with respect to how you can use your neural network and the technology that governs it it's not only one way it's not only that one type of learning you can use of course all of this is unsupervised learning at the end of the day but you can have multiple models multiple tweakings and you can just find out all these different models at all right these are extremely different models so one model might work fantastic for you while the other one might be complete disaster so you'll have to run through all these models to understand which one works best right now just for the convenience purpose, purposes I've I've chosen Mona Lisa I've chosen President Obama let me hit generate and as soon as I hit generate it will basically take a couple of minutes and in my opinion it usually takes 1 to 2 minutes so let's just wait and see how it uh, how the output looks like right All right, guys. So this that this took about one or two minutes to uh, uh, you know sort of process, and now you can see that right. We we use the image of Mona Lisa and we use the video of President Obama. Now let me hit play, and of course it doesn't look as accurate as you would want it to be, and it looks super hilarious. I'm sure some of you are laughing right now, but we just took an image and we're eventually uh, making it work in a very good way, right? Of course. Now this and this particular video might not work really well. So what we can go on to do. let me just click on back here and uh, let's let us just try mon lisa's face or let's just try uh, putin's face with obama's expressions right so let me just hit generate again All right, guys. So we hit generate again, and as you can see, it took another couple of minutes to work. And look at this now, uh, right? So this is basically the original uh, uh, video that we took from President Obama, but we took an image from President Putin, and now President Putin is speaking instead of Obama, right? This on the left is a deep fake video. Let me play that again, and let me try to see if I can zoom in a little so that you guys can see it better, right? I'm sure you can see it better now. Look at that. you can take a look at it and at just the first 8 seconds that we just saw it would be slightly difficult right especially this part look at how true the expressions are it would be difficult to say if that really is president putin or not right now this is the reason why deep fake attracts so much attention right now you can make any of these guys say anything that you would want and of course i highly suggest against that but uh, it is possible to do so right now let's actually go on to try this one more time let's try to pick something else of course in some cases you can look at it and say hey big deal i can find out that it's fake but what you are not trying to understand is that this is basically a demonstration to showcase the technology right we're not talking about the flagship aspects of the technology as i told you if you want to understand how good this technology is just take a look at all the deep fake videos that are present online and you will be surprised. price right okay so uh, who else are we going to take let's try to take someone from game of thrones uh, fantastic let's try to take ned stark we all loved ned stark before they had to kill him on the show right uh, so what are we going to give ned stark so let's let's give all the features of uh, president trump right and guys at any moment of time you realize that you can upload your own image you can upload your own video and create a deep fake as well right this is why i told you that even though you might not know a word of python you can create your deep fake video just by following along with this particular tutorial right now again let's just give it a minute and let's just see the output that we get when we go on to bring ned stark and of course when we go on to bring president trump together right and surprisingly that just took about 15 seconds uh, to work and let me hit play on this Now as soon as I hit play on this uh you can sort of figure out with respect to the lip movement that it might be a fake video but just take a look at everything else apart from the lip area can you just understand that this is an image this is a static image which is being converted this well into a video right that is where all the concern comes uh, uh you know in terms of uh, privacy in terms of people being really mad uh, because this is going on right now let's take out uh, another one right Let's take Leonardo DiCaprio's video, and let's just probably give it to 
Sansa Stark. Fantastic. Now let me just try, uh, let me hit generate. Guys, we can play this game all day long. It's super fun. Trust me, even when I was doing a ton of research to make sure to bring this video for all of you guys, I sat and played around a good while as well. So you can have the amount of uh, expertise uh, to be very low in terms of where you do not require Python at all. But if you start using this particular project, you can create your own deep fake video. Now for the people who might be uh, telling that, hey, okay, so we're all creating beautiful looking deep fake videos, but all of these are like super low low quality, right? Well, if you remember it when I told you while encoding itself, we usually break the video and the images down to a simple yet understandable place where it effectively does this quickly, right? Now, if the video was in 19201080p and the image was like a super high quality, high bitrate image, it is definitely going to take more than 15, 20 minutes. In some cases, it can take two, three hours to even generate this particular video for you, right? Now, it is no point that you sit here for two hours doing nothing just to see how well it might work, right? So that's the reason it's... It, it gets cropped down into small one but there was also an option to convert it back and download it in 1080p but just before that let's take a look at this because this combination even i haven't taken a look at right okay you can sort of say uh, taking a look at it that this might not work uh, for sansa's expression the way sansa is talking right because it's not sansa stark talking it's basically leonardo dicaprio where he uh the entire you can see all these features are not very well tweaked but then uh there are some cases where you can definitely not find out about it itself, right? Let's try one last case before we go on to wind this demo up, right? You guys can sit and play around as long as you want. The code is available, the data set is available, all the Git repositories are available uh, by those guys uh, that I mentioned. Again, full credits to all of them, right? Now, what are we gonna do? Let's take, uh, Let's take Winston Churchill and uh, let's take uh, Trump again, right? Okay, let's let's not take Trump. Uh, let's take this person. I really don't know who that person is. I'm sorry. Now, let me hit generate. Now, as soon as I hit generate, let's just take a look at how well it might work or not. Now, this is a very simple piece of code. Of course, it's simple because, uh, uh, you know, on the lines of deep learning, this is not a thorough product that you can sell saying, hey, give me an image, I'm going to give you a deep fake video. But this is the technological base that will eventually uh, help us have an application in the near future which says, hey, give me one input image and done. You can have any any video faked as much as you want, right? I don't know why anyone would want to do that. But if that is required, it definitely is possible. Let's, so let's take a look at the last image and let's just see the fantastic output that we're about to get, right? Because even I'm equally excited uh, as you, right? Right? Even though I understand to a good amount of technicality, every single function, uh, you know, most of the functionality that's going on in this code, if you actually go on to sit and trace, uh, you can understand all of it, to be very honest, but then it definitely requires working knowledge of deep learning and all of that, guys, right? So this is what I told you, right, guys? Uh, you know, some of you all who might be complaining, saying, hey, this is only 256 by 256 resolution. I am a guy, I'm a full HD guy, I want full HD. If you want full HD, you can click on convert to 19201080, mouse button, done. You guys will have that if you just want to download the video it will be available again as well right so let's let's just try to print this out okay so that has music as well so let's just bring down the music So this particular application might not work really well right so let's take Winston Churchill and quickly try with Obama one last time all right, guys. So now let's just take a take a look at Winston Churchill and President Obama as well, right? Now, President Obama has probably moved moved his head and given these expressions in this particular video, and we're trying to recreate it with respect to Winston Churchill as well. Let me play this again. At the start, it might seem like a little iffy, but later, look at that. If if Winston Churchill was making a speech, giving these expressions, and uh, since Winston Churchill was, uh, you know, in the 40s, 50s, 60s, all those times, uh, the video will be made in a way that it will be faked uh, such that it is the videos in the 50s. So that way it will be super convincing that, hey, Churchill might have said something like this, right? So that is something you have to keep in mind as well, guys. Now, let me just scroll up again. I know that we haven't gone through uh, each of these quotes in the pairs, but as I told you, the majority of the logic that you see here is basically us adding buttons as adding an interface as adding uh, uh, you know these images to basically try to show uh, how everything works for you you can see that a lot of this is HTML a lot a lot of the button functionality so when you select an image you have to tell Python Python has to understand that you have selected that image as the input right now all of that functionality is written and of course we discussed multiple different uh, files as well right so guys this is the demo on deep fake so I hope uh, you know you guys sort of had fun understanding and knowing that you know you can go on to do something 
something as uh, fun as this in python right now let's quickly go on to summarize the session all right guys so to summarize everything that you have learned on this particular video we started out by taking an introduction to understanding what deep fake is then we understood why it became so popular uh, you know why it is uh, sort of viral among the general population we took a look at the technical aspects of how to go on to create uh, your own uh, deep fake video we took a look at all the components that are required in terms of non technical aspects and even the technical aspects as well right once we understood everything we checked out how it worked once we understood the concept of gans and once we took a look at auto encoders it was high time that we had to take a look at that beautiful uh, research example right so we took a look at the demo and i hope that you guys had fun throughout the entire demo and of course i believe uh, that all of you all are clear with everything we have covered in this particular video right fantastic on that note you have come to the end of the video thank you so much for watching my name is anirudh rao and i'll see you on the next one I want to introduce you to Great Learning Academy. This is a free initiative by Great Learning where you can have access to over 200 plus courses with 1000 plus hours of free content on all of the trending high demand domains absolutely free. Register now to complete the course and get your free certificate of completion as well. Check out the link in the description box of the video below for more details. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell this is done to make sure you do not miss out on any of the new updates or video releases from great learning and of course guys if you enjoy this video show us some love and do like this video knowledge increases by sharing right so make sure you share this video with your friends colleague and everyone who can make use of it and at the end of it make sure to comment on the video if you have any queries or any suggestions and i'll be more than happy to respond to all of your comments